Welcome everyone. I'm Nancy Bronstein. I am a FAF and uh, educator as well as my Sonet, our embroidery software. And I live in Western Massachusetts and I'm coming to you from my sewing studio there. I also have two people who are assisting me in the background, Meredith and Amy, and they are in totally different states from me but they will be monitoring your comments and questions so that I don't have to uh, think about what I'm going to say next and going to show you next and read the comment, comments at the, the same time and get distracted like a golden retriever seeing a squirrel. I just wouldn't stay on topic. So it's great that they're there helping me. And I want to definitely encourage you to ask some questions. As I'm sitting here, I'm alone in my studio looking at the camera and not seeing your faces, which I really miss. Um, it, I'm not getting the feedback. So having you ask questions shows me that you're engaged and you're interested. So today, what I'm going to be talking about is using quilt or using fabric panels to make quilts. So um, why you would want to do it, what types there are, um, how to embellish them, a, a variety of things that I hope that you'll find interesting. I first became uh, interested in using uh, or aware of panels, I, I don't know, a while back. And it seems like the first ones I saw were for kids, um, you know, ABC blocks and teddy bears and things like that. And then I began to see more that were designed for adults. And as you see behind me, I have done the Dream Big quilt uh, fabric panel. And I think many, 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 many other people have done it. it uh, I love it. It uh, almost, um, I th I'm sure it's, it's the most popular panel out there. And they have made other changes to it, different colors, different, more of a fall theme. And it's actually getting much bigger with digital printing. The panels can get much bigger. So it um, has, I think, started a whole interest in, in panel quilting amongst those who have, who've never done them. Now, why would you want to use uh, a, um, a panel? Well, there's a few different reasons. Um, I think that that was the first panel that I used. And the reason I had for using that, besides liking the way that it looked, was that I bought that panel at a time when I got my first long arm and I knew that when I was going from quilting on my domestic machine to quilting on the long arm there was going to be an adjustment period and I didn't want to take one of my quilt tops that I had spent a lot of time on and potentially ruin it by not really knowing my way around the long arm yet there's this period where you you know when you get a new machine you got to get to know each other so the very first thing I did was I took two old sheets with a um, flan old flannel ba uh, blanket as the, the batting, and I quilted that whole um, queen size sheet. Then the second thing I did was use the panel because I knew from when I learned how to do free motion and ruler work on my domestic machine that you can kind of doodle around on, on a piece of fabric and think you know what you're doing, but then when you have to stay within some lines or some design aspects, it's a different ball game. So switching over to the panel, I knew that I wanted to stay within the pedals. So that was, gave me parameters of, um, that I had to uh, stay within to really see if I was ready to, to uh, quilt one of my piece tops. And because I did that step, if I had ruined it, I would have just been out about 15, 20 bucks as opposed to hours and hours of time uh, putting together a quilt top and then, you know, having so many stitches to rip out that I would just put it, you know, in a box and probably never finish it. Now, as far as other types of uh, panels, we have these types that are all like just pictorial, like it's a big picture, you know, could be um, a mountain scene, it could be, you know, a children's scene, it could be anything, but it's, it's the whole piece is basically one image. Then we have um, uh, panels that are more um, like quilt tops. Like we, I, I'm going to see if I can get this in the camera here. So we have this part of a panel because I've already cut it up. This 
is part of a panel where it looks like if you were far enough away, you might think that these were blocks that I pieced. <clears throat> so I did make a quilt out of the piece that I cut off, and I'm going to show you in a minute. And what this is going to be is I am going to cut this in half lengthwise and quilt it and make two pillows, to, um, two big throw pillows to go with it. So the quilt that I made, I'm going to see if I can hold. Uh, actually, I, I, I'm going to just show you a picture so I can show you the whole quilt. So I'm going to switch over to my iPad here. <clears throat> And this is what the panel looked like when I first purchased it. So what I did is I cut the pieces lengthwise. So I'm gonna use my Apple pencil. So I cut the pieces of the panel, cut the panel into pieces lengthwise or widthwise rather, and then added this these uh, the decorative element of the the red and the um, green strip. Then I took the next step. What I did is I just cut this along here. Why is my pencil not working? Here we go. Along here. Like this. and ended up and then put in the, the strips as well again so then i ended up with this quilt where i did stitch in the ditch with between the green and the red fabric here and here but then what i did is um, i decided to make each because each block was different i decided to quilt each of them differently so i'm going to try to zoom in so you can see well actually this is not this is the one that has not been quilted yet and here's the quilted version. So I'm going to just see if I can, oh, let's see if I, yes, here we go. So you can see how the quilting augmented the design that, you know, is mimicking a block. I think this one is my favorite, the sunflower quilting. Now you might wonder, how did I do this quilting on the long arm? Did, did I use rulers? Did I, is that free motion? No, I'm not that good with free motion. I actually am very fortunate in that I have, we are in 2023, we are coming out with a um, 20 inch long arm with automation. And I have the one of the prototypes. So that was one of my first things that I, I put on that frame and had the advantage of using the prototype. So it looks like we have a couple comments or questions. Let's see, from Paula, I love playing with panels. I also started using them to learn the capabilities of my new machine, but this has quickly become a passion of mine. I love the challenge of seeing what I can do with a panel. Yes, that's an, the other aspect that it's a, total, it's a different way of doing a, a quilt. And um, there are so many different ways that you can take that panel and make it your own. And I'm gonna uh, throw around some ideas of what I did beyond this, this particular quilt. And then Karen says, was quilting done on arm, long arm or embroidery or question mark? It was done on the long arm with uh, automation. So uh, those, um, we, we will have pro stitcher on our um, long arm. And each of these designs are inside the software. So I did do the individual designs in the block in the, um, with the automation. And then the, also the design, this curly design here. Let's see if I can get my pencil to work again. This curly design here on the sides I also did with automation. So, um, that's that's how that was done. Okay, so let's 
make this the regular size. Then um, speaking of different ways to quilt it, let's see, Sandy says, I like panels, but get so frustrated because, frustrated because they're crooked. Okay, that's, <laughs> thank you, Sandy. That's a lead into one of the things that I wanted to talk about. So I'll skip right over to that. So, and I'll come back to different ideas of how to quilt these things. So sometimes you buy these panels and then you go to um, make it a, a, a nice rectangle because they're going to be, you know, usually they're about a yard long and they're 42 or 45 inches wide. So it's a, a rectangle, not a square. You're squaring up the rectangle. And sometimes they are off. Now, I haven't found that to be a terrible problem, but I think it is because I'm one of those people that I wash all my fabric before I do anything with it. I just don't want to spend all a lot of time with a quilt, and particularly if it has red fabric in there and have it run. You know, like I, I may launder it properly, but the person I give it to may not. So um, I launder it with um, the fabric with color catchers. And so I get the dye out to begin with. So I think that part of the problem with them being um, wonky is that it's in the sizing and in the finishing stuff they put on the fabric and the way that it's wrapped around the um, bolt. And a lot of that I think comes out when you um, wash it. Now that's not that that doesn't necessarily mean that they're all perfect, but um, there are ways to work around that. So. When I get a, uh, a panel, I'll show you what I do with it. So this is a, actually show you what the panel looks like to begin with. So this is a panel that I, I got at my local quilt store. And by the way, if you buy panels at your local quilt store, a lot of times they have fabric to go along with the the, uh, the uh, panel you know, that matches it perfectly. So I bought this and um, another piece of fabric so that I'm when I'm ready to, to actually quilt this panel, I'm good to go. I don't have to go back and try to match things up. I, I live out in the country and getting to my quilt store is sometimes not all that easy. Um, <clears throat> so what, what I do when I'm going, going to square it up is I take my salvage edge and I'm going to fold it together. And doing this on camera is a little bit uh, tricky. So I've got my salvages mixed, uh, matched up. Then I'm going to go down to the other end. And get the salvages matched up. and then bring them together. I've got all four salvages together here at the top. And then I'm gonna shake it out. And now at this point, if what I would do is this, the, the raw edge, I would take over to my cutting board and cut that, you know, I've, I've got some fraying because I washed this, but I would cut this so that it, it is a, a true, you know, rectangle. Now, with this fabric, given that the design does not go all the way to the edge, if I cut, you know, if I had to cut off a half an inch or an inch, it wouldn't be terrible. I'm talking, just seeing my lips. I'm going to sit down for a second, and then I'll show you what I would do uh, on my cutting board. Now, so it wouldn't, it's not as crucial that it is totally straight before I cut it. Uh, however, if you have a, a digital image where you'd be cutting off part of a building or something like that, then you're going to have to um, go to some more efforts to get this thing to be straight. So if it were not straight here, I would um, uh, spritz it and with my iron try to encourage the short piece to get longer because I think most of this is coming again from the finishing techniques, not the actual fabric itself, if you buy quality panel. Now Heidi says the panels don't seem very color fast sometimes or great fabric quality. 
Um, I generally, like this one is uh, Riley Blake, and I also have some from Moda. Um, I haven't had problems with those two brands. Um, if you buy something inexpensive off the internet, your mileage may vary. So I've got my four um, edges of salvage up at the top, and I'm going to switch my camera over here. Whoops, not that camera, this camera. And let's see if I can get this on here good. So I'm going to make sure that my salvages are all matching up here. And then if I see if there's a piece that is not matching up, I'm going to try to kind of massage everything into place here and get it as straight as I can get it. And looking pretty good there. Just want to make sure there's no wrinkles here. And then I would cut about a half of an inch off of this edge. Oops, can't see here. I would cut about a half of an inch off of my raw edge here. And then when I open it up, I have a nice straight edge and ready to, to use this panel. Now, the other thing I was going to say, probably before I go on to um, go off of cutting, is that the next thing to consider is when you're making these things, say you have, let's see, I've got one that has squares here. Some of the panels, as I was beginning to say before, some of the panels are just a big image. Then some of the panels are, they look like quilt blocks. Then some have actually have a frame around each image. <clears throat> it's almost like each, each uh, frame is um, a story unto itself and um, could be quilted like this without cutting it out and just doing some, say, free motion in between. Or you could cut out these individual pieces and do whatever you wanted to do with it. <clears throat> but depending upon how you go about doing this, I mean, you could, I guess, not add much fabric to this at all. I tend to always put a frame around things. And what I'm planning to do with this one, since it is kind of, um, oh, the colors are, are kind of traditional, um, older style, in, in my mind, like not Civil War, but, you know, it's not uh, K facet for instance, you know, it's this, this, this muted, these muted tones. I, I am going to make some blocks to go around the outside that are traditional blocks, like probably, um, oh, uh, like a lo little log cabins or something like that, flying geese. And when you go to do that, because you have a primitive, yes, Meredith, you came up with the right word for me, primitive. <laughs> I was telling Meredith earlier today that I'm searching for words a little bit today. I haven't done Facebook Live in a while, so I'm glad she's piping in with the word. She read my mind, even though I, I couldn't access those brain cells, she did. Okay, so when I'm going to make my blocks in order to make a border around my panel, you can do it one of two ways. You can do it so, in such a way that you fit those blocks to the panel which requires a bit of math and um, probably more uh, accuracy than I'm, I have time to, to um, deal with. It's easier if you, I, what I would do is I would uh, approximate, I would figure out, you know, within an inch how much of the, um, what the blocks, um, the, the length and the width to fit the top and the sides of course, but then I would cut my panel to fit my blocks rather than cut my blocks to fit my panel. Um, I'm not going to be making, for instance, blocks that are, you know, uh, five and three eighths. You know, I'm gonna make a standard five inch block and then put it together and then cut the panel to fit that because you have to have one size for the top and the bottom and one size for the sides and you can figure out what it's gonna be 
and then you know you don't have to be so exacting if you fit the panel to the blocks rather than the blocks to the panel <clears throat> that's my my thought so again this panel that i purchased let's see who this is from this is Clothworks, and my local quilt store had some really cute fabric to go with it. So I'm looking forward to doing something with this primitive fabric. I tend to more often than not use more like K facet or purples and teals, as you can see from the, the Dream Big. But I'm looking forward to this primitive panel. Caught my eye. So let's see what else I've got on my iPad here for my next slide. Okay. So um, another um, idea that I had was that I want, or that I wanted to talk about was that sometimes it may not exactly be a panel but um, it kind of uses the, the um, kind of, I think of the carefree nature of panels, that when you use panels, because you didn't invest a lot of time in the making of the blocks, it, um, I feel better about doing things that are improv. You know, like just try new things. Like, oh, you know, if I cut up this panel and, it, you know, it doesn't float my boat, I'm, you know... I can probably cut it in little piece, littler pieces and do something else with it, but it's not, you know, a huge loss. Like if I cut up uh, something that I had spent hours and hours and hours of piecing. So in that vein, I found this fabric that looks like uh, orange peel blocks. And here's the fabric. It's already been uh, quilted here. So you'll see some of the quilting in there, but that's what the fabric looks like. And I made this um, improv quilt using that because it was, um, I just started cutting and I'll show you what I mean in just a second on the iPad to make this quilt. So to make this, the first thing I did was I had my rectangle, Let's see if I can get my pen to work again. I had my rectangle of fabric then I put a border around it. And then I just cut down the uh, one side and put a, a strip of fabric like that. Maybe I should do it in a different color. Then I did another strip and then what I did is I cut twice, took this piece out, and then I turned it upside down, turned it the other way, and put it back in. And I'll show you what I mean on this quilt. So I started out and I had this red piece across here. It didn't have the gap in the middle. It, here's the gap. Here's the piece that was down there. So because I took, after I sewed that red all the way across, I took my uh, rotary cutter and cut it like this, and I cut it like that, and then I turned it the um, middle piece 180 degrees. I then ended up with part, part of the, the red fabric down here and up here and up here. So it's, it's fun to play with these panels. Like, you know, this is not exactly a panel, but it does look like it, you know, uh, it does look like a quilted block. And I could have, what I would have done if I had more time is I would have kept doing that, kept slashing it and turning it around and adding more strips. I knew I wanted to get it done for um, this class, but it, it, you know, it just kind of frees you up when you use a panel, I think. Um, you don't have to, um, uh, worry so much and it's just uh, like I said if you ruin it you know it's it's not a I mean what have, what have you lost you know a, a couple of yards of fabric and not a whole lot of time 
Now going back to the very, I've started out the beginning of the class today. Let's see if I can get back to the beginning here, talking about um, panels. Now here's another, uh, I'm sorry, panels that have a central image. Here's another one that I did using the central image in the middle of uh, Gustav Klimt's the, the Kiss. That's a famous painting. And I'm gonna see if I can hold it up for you. This is just another example of what you could do with a central image quilt. My quilt back here, I decided that I was gonna face it. I didn't wanna put anything around the outside. I thought the image was more uh, powerful without a border on it. And um, that's, that's the route I went with that. Whereas with this, um, the Klimt, I wanted to add, oops, upside down. I wanted to add to the, um, the painting by putting a border around it. And if you look at the painting, you see that it's kind of um, not exactly abstract, more impressionistic. And so um, I didn't feel like I had to make these rigidly accurate blocks to go around the outside. It needed to be more sort of free form because that it kind of fit the painting. So what I did is I took um, some strips that I, I thought augmented the uh, panel and just sew different widths of strips together and then cut some strips an inch and a half and sewed those together. So then I had my border that looks, you know, like that. <clears throat> Very quick project. Then to um, embellish this and add to the uh, Klimt's beautiful painting, what I did, and see if I can show you on the iPad, if I can zoom in here. So, see if it'll let, yes, okay, good. So on the gold background, I did use, um, again, Pro Stitcher to make these, it's just a repeat of this block design that I made bigger and smaller to fill up the background. But then on the image itself, I did free motion um, randomly with some gold metallic thread. And <clears throat> then uh, some red thread around the edges with this swirly design. And then finished it off with um, some gold metallic um, satin cording there. So I'm going to show you how I, I um, sewed that on and on my uh, icon too. And um, what this took the place of doing stitch in the ditch across there. <clears throat> and I've done that on a few, um, a few quilts where I've used uh, satin cording to um, stitch in the ditch as opposed to doing stitch in the ditch and it gives it a, a, the the quilt some dimension now i'm planning on taking some beads some gold beads and putting them in the star oops can't see in the camera putting them putting them inside these stars um, i do love uh, crystals However, and that would have been the easy route to glue some, pick some, some, I can never say it, Swarovski crystals. I'm sure I know I'm murdering that name, but you know what I mean. Um, I do love the look of that, and that's what I would do. But my quilts get folded up and put in my suitcase to travel to teach, and then unfolded and folded up, and, and they invariably will lose a few crystals somewhere. So I'm going to take the time while I'm watching Netflix or something to stitch down some beads. Be, you know, if it's sewn down, it, it lasts better or um, sequins would last better if I sewed those down. <clears throat> but that's a, um, probably a win maybe a winter project. 
let's see now. Elaine says, or asks, what is the name of that panel again? And where did you find that panel? That panel is, um, the, it's from a painting called The Kiss by Gustav Klimt. And I got it on Etsy. So if you just, um, actually, if you would um, search on fabric panels and put Klimt, K-L-I-M-T, it will probably come up. <clears throat> he has a few different paintings that I really love. And um, they were all available on Etsy. <clears throat> I uh, have not seen that at my local quilt store. I do like to um, to shop there whenever possible, um, but I did find it on Etsy. Now, another thing I was going to go over was using other, or show you how I sewed on the um, gold cording, as well as doing some decorative stitches to finish off your quilts with panels. So I have a quilt to show you first before we, or a couple things to show you before we sit down at the sewing machine. So I have a table runner here to give you some ideas. And this, I'm pulling this up because, because it's a table runner doesn't mean that it's only good for table runners, this technique. It's also good for quilts and, um, you know, not just table runners. So if you have one of our higher end fafs, you know that you have these beautiful ribbon stitches. So they can be used in any of your borders or in between some of these blocks. Um, you know, I could do that if I wanted to, even with this primitive um, quilt, I could do it between, if for some reason, if I wanted to in between something where it has these uh, framed panels within the panels within the panels. So that's a, you know, a decorative element. Now we do have these floating stitches that can be used to join blocks. And then the radiant stitches that can be placed on your fabric, on your block after you've already um, put the piece of the blocks together. So <clears throat> these decorative stitches, these exclusive five stitches are beautiful on quilts. Um, you know, really adds a lot to the um, end product. <clears throat> now another technique, and this, this, um, this quilt is again a, a, a color way stretch for me being more of the primitive style. Um, but because it is that, that color way, um, I decided to use our heirloom quilting stitches to quilt it. Now, this does not have a panel in the middle, or in essence, it does, actually. It doesn't have a printed panel. It has a panel that I made in embroidery. So the center part has this panel that I did in embroidery. Less is more, unless it's coffee. And then I quilted around it. Now, pieced around it. So I made a piece border. I had all these pieces that were that, these, this rectangular size. So what I did when I went to quilt it is I used our all of our beautiful heirloom quilting stitches. And that's what quilted the quilt sandwich together. Then because I had this fabric that has leaves, I did thre thread painting to quilt it together. I just basically created the leaves, the uh, veins in the leaves, and that's how I quilted it. So instead of using free motion or ruler work or automation, I used our um, decorative stitches to, to quilt this and thread painting. So I'm going to show you how I would go about um, putting on the cording, what foot I would use, and how I would get these stitches so nicely spaced, you know, that I put three in each block, uh, and have how it's easily done with the icon two. So I'm going to switch over my camera over here. And you may notice that there is this grid on my fabric. 
Well, with the Icon 2, we have projection that is very customizable. So first off, it has um, one choice where you can have the grid and you can make this grid whatever color you want. You can make the lines whatever distance apart you want each of them to be from each other. And I'm going to make it wider because I want my decorative stitches further apart. I'm going to put this on 12 millimeters. <clears throat> then you probably notice this red line going down. That is um, my um, stitch guide. Now, if I wanted to, I can move that over um, quite a bit to the left and quite a bit to the right if I want to use that to um, go along uh, my stitches to keep them straight. And then we have this white zigzag down the middle because that is our stitch preview that actually shows you what the stitch is going to look like. So I'm going to go into my quilting menu and uh, pick a different stitch that's a little bit more decorative. And <clears throat> what I would do is I'm going to stitch along here, put my needle up, I got the wrong foot on. <clears throat> Bear with me a minute. I forgot that I was, was going to need the 1A foot. And I think instead I'm going to use the sewing star because I can't find my 1A. <clears throat> so the sewing star foot is your 1A foot with a cutout so that it gives you the stability for uh, of a 1A foot. It gives you the, position, the uh, cutout in the back for the IDT. Um, but it gives you a little bit more visibility, almost like a um, open toe foot. So <clears throat> start by putting my needle down and stitch a little bit. And then if I want to make another row of a different stitch, or I could keep it the same, but let's just for interest's sake, find another stitch that's nice. This is another nice one. <clears throat> so then what I'm going to do is, I, in order to keep my rows even, I'm going to keep this grid line running right along the edge of my last row of stitching. So what I'm in essence doing, I, you know, I have a tendency to watch the needle, but now I need to train myself to watch this line. So that line stays on the edge of my um, last row of stitches. So you can see with this grid how easily you can get these nice uh, parallel rows of stitching. Now, if you don't have the um, Icon 2, you can certainly use the multi-line decorative foot. And the multi-line decorative foot has uh, lines that are a quarter inch apart. So you, you use the same sort of concept, but you're using the lines on the foot. The downside of the multi-line decorative foot is that it does not have the cutout in the back for the IDT. Um, so it's, you know, you won't have that advantage, but it is a very, I mean, I use this foot a lot and <clears throat> I really like it. So I'm gonna turn off my um, light there. And now this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this line. You know, I'm gonna uh, simulate not having an icon to I'm going to use this line on the edge of this um, row of decorative stitches to keep them lined up. And I didn't position it as well as I would like. And there we go. And that's a little bit better. Uh, 
<clears throat> so again, you could see how you could easily make rows of decorative stitches either very close together. Like if you were going to do match stick quilting, you'd probably want to use each of these lines. I jumped over um, two lines to make it a half inch rather than a quarter of an inch, but you could do, do either. Let's see if we have any questions here. <clears throat> no, Amy just mentioned to me that she's adding the feet and the item numbers as I'm talking about them in case anybody's interested in inquiring further about them. <clears throat> So um, now for the um, satin cording, the satin cording um, you can purchase in a roll um, and it comes in many, many colors. It comes in different diameters. This is, uh, it doesn't say what it is, um, but um, I use a lot of this. Um, if you wanted to, uh, let me go grab something with three. You can use it as um, with couching to, to in a single strand, or if you have the three hole yarn foot, you can actually do um, a, an effect where it's a, you're using three different um, cording, types of cording. This is um, silver gold and a, a gray thicker cording and uh, with gold metallic thread with a special stitch to stitch it down. So this is when you wanna really make a bold statement. You would wanna use the um, three hole yarn foot. For doing just one row of um, satin cording, the um, couching foot works really well. And also for other couching tasks, <clears throat> but if you're going to have to, if you're going to stitch in the ditch something, you're going, you have to put that row of stitches there anyway. So why not add more interest by adding in uh, some satin cording? Now on this uh, row that I, or this uh, strand that I pre sew, I have pre-sewn, I use black thread so that you would see the thread. It does, of course, look much more attractive if you use gold embroidery thread or, or metal, some sort of gold metallic thread. That, that's really what looks nice. <clears throat> so I'm going to show you how this works. So you take your satin cording and this hole is going to keep the satin cording right where you want it to be and it won't uh, get away from you. Also, I wanted to show you, and I forgot, is there is a groove on the underside. So that groove, when you put the cording through, that keeps this satin cording from wobbling around all over the place and not looking so good. So it just kind of holds it in position. If the foot were flat on the bottom, it would be a little bit more difficult to get a nice result. Got to have the right tool for the job. So then you're going to want to pick a stitch that, this was just a zigzag that I made a bit narrower. Um, there are other decorative stitches that one could use. Let's see if I can find one quickly that would be interesting. Well, we'll go with a quilting stitch. So I have a stitch that um, I'm going to make a little bit more narrow to fit this particular, this um, satin cording, and we'll see how this looks. Of course, before you put on your quilt, you try it out. Okay, let's see what that looks like. And that gives it kind of a, you know, a different effect. So there's different effects you can get with the stitch that you choose and with the color thread that you choose. Now, the thing to know about the satin cording though is you kind of kind of plan ahead because you are gonna have this 
end that it's best if you can plan ahead so that you're going to hide it in a seam, you know, so that you're not going to just trim it. You have to trim it off there um, or punch a hole in your fabric in order to bury it. So it's, if you have, if you um, know that you're going to have a seam there, that would be perfect because this would be buried in the seam on either side. So that's why with mine, let me cut this and I'll show you how I did it on my project. switch my camera here. So that's why I made, um, it just kind of goes off to the end so that the binding, maybe it's easier to see over here, so that the binding will cover up the end of the satin cording. And it just makes a, you know, a nice, um, you know, corner there too. And on this one, the same thing, this wall hanging, where I just went off the edge so that I wouldn't have any problems with that sticking up. <clears throat> okay, so any questions at this point? Okay, so for those of you that have perhaps not been to these Facebook Lives before. They, um, after the Facebook Live is over, the recording is placed on our YouTube channel. So the FAF YouTube channel will have this um, recording as well as many, many others. I think it's easier to search for our um, Facebook Lives actually on YouTube than it is on Facebook. And we educators in the department do do these educational Facebook lives on a regular basis. I don't know if it's once or twice a month. Um, also, um, our sister channel, the MySonet channel, MySonet, forgotten the full name of the page, but our official MySonet page, Facebook page, there's also regular Facebook lives done, and then they are posted on YouTube. Now, our next Facebook Live is Thursday, September 22nd with Dee Marie, and she'll be talking about Shape Creator. Shape Creator is a really fun topic. Um, you may not realize, uh, even if you have an icon or icon two, that you have design software right inside your machine. And that design software can do some really fun things. And one of those things is to create different shapes that you can embroider. And Dee Marie will tell you all about that. And you can make some fun projects without having any software whatsoever on your computer, just done on the icon or icon two. And um, I think you'll enjoy that. I, uh, we're gonna finish a little bit early today. I didn't have as many questions as I thought I would. If you have any questions about anything that I covered, I will be monitoring this Facebook Live for additional comments because sometimes people can't watch it at the time that the Facebook Live is given and they watch it the next day or the next day. If you have a question at that point, just post it on there. And I will be checking it, like I said, for about a week. And if you have a question at that point in time, I'll be happy to answer it. So I just want to say thank you for joining me. I appreciate you giving me your time. And I hope that I have intrigued you with using panels. Um, just to recap some of the ideas, um, panels are fun to play with because you're not investing in um, a lot of time into the creation of the panel. So just, you know, kind of try new things, try new techniques, try, you know, cutting it, slashing it and cutting it and putting it back together and see what happens. And you know, just just have have fun with it. You know, it's um, it's kind of liberating. Um, also, you you probably want to buy one that's a, a good quality from a you know a name brand fabric maker as opposed to one maybe you pick up at Walmart because those probably will be a bit more wonky. So uh, I hope you enjoy enjoyed this today, and I hope you make a, a nice panel quilt. In fact, actually, anybody that's made panel quilts or if you make a panel quilt, please post it. I'd love to see a picture. 
just post it in the comments um, if you, when you have a chance. So again, thank you for joining me and happy sewing. <laughs>